Hey there, amazing audience who've joined the revolving time today. Get ready to embark on an unforgettable adventure with us. Subscribe now and let's uncover the hidden secrets and truths together. Life has a curious way of throwing unexpected curveballs our way, doesn't it? Well my friends, today's story is published by DZ Morgan. I discovered an obsession for allowing my wife, even encouraging her to explore her desires during the week we spent apart. Here is chapter one, and I hope you will enjoy this. Dear reader, my name is James, and this is a story about my wife, our relationship, and an adventure that changed our lives forever. In the following chapters, you'll read the virtual diary of my wife, Samantha, as she records the various steps of her love you'll journey. Each entry was written as an email to me to keep me informed as I allowed her even encouraged her to explore her love-yule desires during a week we spent apart. Through her narratives, she not only discusses the intimate details of her extramarital affairs, but she also shares her inner thoughts and feelings. I add a bit of my own writing along the way to disclose my reactions to her exploits, as well as to provide some context for what you will be reading. Samantha and I met and began dating when we were both 18 years old. We were married when we were 22 years old. The story of her diary began when we were 26, and since we were virgins when we met, I was the only person she'd ever slept with. For the bulk of our relationship, the thought had never crossed my mind about Samantha being intimate with anyone else. Why would it? Samantha and I loved each other very much, and we both felt lovely fulfilled. We were young, fit, and full of life. We had love regularly, more days than not, and often more than once a day. There was nothing missing in our love life, or at least that's how it began. You're probably wondering what we look like. Samantha is a slender natural blonde with stunning blue eyes and the sweetest dimples when she smiles. At 26, she is just as much the perky, energetic young beauty she was when I met her in our teenage years. I've also asked Samantha to provide a description of me. I think it's rather generous, but here it is. James has olive skin and dark, wavy hair. He usually has a well-kept beard or sometimes facial stubble. His hazel eyes are deep set, soft, and caring. His nose is balanced, and his chin and jawline are firm but not protruding. He has thick, expressive eyebrows that I know he sometimes trims. He's around average or slightly below average height, about the same as me. But I find that he's the perfect height to cuddle at night and to kiss while standing face to face. He works out every day, so of course he has great muscle definition. He has the coveted inverted triangle build, wider at the shoulders and narrower at the hips. He has well-defined back muscles like a swimmer, and his arms stand out in a tank top. His pecs are built from working the bench press but they still are soft enough to lay my head upon. He's a runner, so his legs are strong. Hopefully these descriptions give you an adequate picture. I hope you see us as appealing, as the upcoming stories feature us, especially Samantha, in rather raunchy positions. Alternatively, I encourage you to visualize us however you like, in whatever way you find attractive. Bear in mind that to me, Samantha is a perfect physical specimen. A person as beautiful on the outside as she is within, who I feel blessed to be with every day. Samantha says she feels the same way about me that given the chance, she would change nothing about me. My hope is to give each reader at least a glimpse of that experience in your own imagination, with imagery from your own inner world. To that end, please indulge me in a brief mental exercise. Update. Let me set the stage for how my wife's adventure came to pass. One evening after a session of lovemaking, we laid together in bed reflecting on one of our mutual friends, Todd, who had always seemed to have problems in his dating life. He was our age, and although he was attractive and often had dates, he rarely spent time with a woman for more than a few weeks. We were discussing how Todd recently went on some dates with Samantha's friend, Jenny, but that the fling had ended in less than a month. In my naivety, I remarked that Todd must be lonely and was probably feeling desperate for love. Hmm, huh, I don't think so, Samantha said. Not from what I've heard. What do you mean? I asked. Well, Todd and Jenny can have love without being in a relationship. True. 
Her certainty made me curious. Wait, do you have inside information on this? Maybe. Jenny and I are good friends, and we girls do talk about these things, you know? Actually, I don't. I knew that some girls talked about that stuff. I didn't know you did. Not with just anyone, Samantha assured me. But Jenny and I have been friends for years. She likes talking about her love life, whether she's bragging or complaining or whatever. And was she bragging about Todd or complaining? I added a nervous laugh, as I felt a bit intrusive for asking. A little of both, she said. She sounded playful. Oh, never mind, I said, as my rational mind won over. Todd was a good friend. I don't think I want to know. Suit yourself. She turned away and pulled the comforter up around her shoulders. I sat in silence for a moment, thinking. Sam, I said finally. Do you tell Jenny about us in that way? Samantha looked towards me. You and me? No, I don't. Well, why not? You're my husband, James. You're different. Jenny, she just tells me about guys she's hooking up with. It's funny gossip, but nothing serious. Oh, okay. That makes sense. I was quiet again for a moment. But if you did tell her about our love life, what would you say? Samantha rolled over toward me and placed her arm on my chest, bringing her head nearer to my ear. Softly, she said, I'd say that my husband rocks my world in bed every night, with his firm, strong body and his big tool. I felt my tool awaken under the covers. It was funny to hear my wife talk to me like this. I knew most of what she was saying was true, as we did have a fabulous love life and had given each other many earth-shattering over the years. But I also felt a bit strange when she complimented my tool, knowing that from what I've seen and read about online, my tool was fairly close to average. Also, because my wife was a virgin when we met, I knew she didn't have much to compare to in real life. Nonetheless, knowing Samantha loved me and wanted me to feel good about myself warmed me inside. Hmm, I moaned. An idea came to me. I thought about how her friends, like Jenny, probably told her stories about various love Yule partners who had different physical qualities than me, different moves in bed. I wondered what Samantha thought of those stories, given her limited personal experience. And without thinking, I started a line of conversation to explore that idea. I didn't yet know it, but I was opening a Pandora's box of sorts. I'm glad you think my tool is big, I said in an appreciative tone, trying to conceal my intention. Good thing for me. It's the only tool you've ever seen in person. I sensed Samantha pause. I wouldn't quite say that, she finally answered. But close. I stopped what I was doing. I was initially going to ask her what kinds of stories she'd heard from her friends that made her curious. But now I'd stumbled upon something else entirely. Wait, you told me I'm the only man you've ever slept with. When were you with someone else? Well, of course I wasn't with anyone else. There was a hint of defensiveness in her voice. I'm just saying I may have seen a tool or two in person before, that's all. Samantha, I'm intrigued. Would you mind telling me about this? Oh my god, it's no big deal, please. Trust me, I've never been with anyone else, and I'd never cheat on you. I trust you, I said. Truly. But I have to admit you've got me curious. I want to know what you've experienced. Really? There's not much to tell. Please, I said. I love you. You're lovey. And your body drives me crazy. I'm sure it drives other men crazy, too. I think it would be kind of hot to hear about your stories of other men you've turned on in the past. I'm sure they'd be interesting, and it's hard to explain, but it's kind of turning me on. It is? She asked. She sounded surprised. It's honestly nothing to talk about, but since you're curious, I guess I can indulge you. I settled back down in the bed, prepared to listen. Okay, she said. The first time wasn't long before I met you. Remember how I briefly had a boyfriend before you? My first boyfriend ever. Tommy Boy. Tom. Whom Samantha referred to as Tommy Boy for some reason which made me faintly jealous. Was a football player at our high school. He was an offensive lineman. Tall, sturdy, and somewhat overweight. 
He mostly rode the bench on the team and was known as a gentle giant at our school. When I first learned Samantha had dated him, I was surprised, as she seemed so much better looking than him. Samantha was a late bloomer in high school, which protected her from the superficial, popular crowd. I'm sure it was the only reason I had a chance with her, as she always valued personality over looks. Anyhow, I went on. Didn't you only date him for a couple of weeks? I did. We were both very timid. I was surprised when it happened. I think we only kissed maybe two or three times. But at some point you saw his tool? My tone of shock was meant to mask my excitement. Yes. Well, more like I felt it. We were in the pool at his parents' house. Everyone else had gone inside, and it was getting dark when he grabbed me and started kissing me. I remember his hands moved down to Maya's asterisk, and it felt surreal, as it was the first time a guy had ever touched me that way. I imagined Samantha as a cute, vibrant 18-year-old, wearing her small, black and white striped bikini in a pool with Tom. I saw his hands sliding down and touching. In that moment, I felt both like Tom and myself, taking the place of Tom in Sam's memory while feeling aroused and deeply jealous. And then, I urged her forward with her story while my hand picked up speed on my tool. She could clearly tell I was aroused by this, although she was likely confused about why. Nevertheless, she continued in her lovey, low voice. As he squeezed Maya's asterisk, he pulled me closer to him, closer to his body. At first, I felt my stomach press against his belly. But as he pulled me tighter into him, I could feel his tool poking me in the abdomen. It was my first time feeling a tool. My eyes closed tight, and I was engrossed in the imagery she cast in my mind. Did you know at that point? Did you know right away that you were feeling his? I did. It was pretty obvious. My stomach lurched. Something about the way she said that made me feel even more jealous, but also more aroused. It was obvious, huh? You mean, it was really big? Samantha laughed. Oh my god, no. I meant it was obvious because of what we were doing. Looking back, I actually think it was probably pretty small. Oh. I laughed nervously again, both relieved and a little let down. You mean you could tell? What did you think about it? Did you know at the time that it was small? I don't think I knew. The whole situation was new to me, and I had no real comparison back then. I wasn't really judging his tool, just thinking about the fact that I was holding it, that it felt so hard, and that it was me who had made it that way. I liked the feeling, it was sort of empowering. That makes sense, I said. I tried to put myself in her shoes, considering how a young woman would feel when touching a man's for the first time. Empowering that made sense. And what happened next? Well, I don't think I was holding his for much more than a minute before his mom came outside and called for us to come in. She couldn't see what we're doing, so we felt like we got away with it. Like it? Hell, no, she answered. I was drunk as hell and wanted him to get the heck out so I could sleep. I already told that dumb as asterisk hole that I wasn't interested and had a boyfriend, but I guess he didn't take no for an answer. Well, anyway, his little stunt sobered me up pretty quick. I grabbed a hairbrush from the desk and chucked it at him, screaming at him to get out. He jumped up, grabbed his clothes and struggled to pull his shorts up over his erection, shouting, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The only reason I didn't freak out more is because of how sorry he seemed and how quickly he left. I suppose a person could feel traumatized by the experience, but I was just glad it was over. I went instantly to sleep, woke up hung over the next morning and moved on with my life. It really meant nothing to me, but looking back, I guess I should have told you. I appreciated her assurances. I actually thought that she was right not to tell me, because in the heat of the moment, I'm sure I would have freaked out and called the police. The whole aftermath may have then made the situation even more traumatizing, whereas Samantha had preferred to just put it behind her. So, what do you think? She asked. Are you mad? Disturbed? I reflected. My erect was gone, totally ruined by my outrage about the guy's behavior. It was curious that her first story made me so aroused, 
but this one just made me shocked and upset. Disturbed? I'm disturbed about him. I'm glad you were okay and that it didn't traumatize you. But did you think about it much after the fact? Not really. It felt a lot better to just pretend it didn't happen. That makes sense. But I wonder clearly his tool was bigger than Tom's. I assume it was bigger than mine too. There was that pit in my stomach again. The mix of jealousy. Well, yes, she said. But of course, that didn't matter to me. I know, I know, I assured her. But it was the biggest you had ever seen. Didn't it make you a little curious? Like curious how? She asked suspiciously. Like curious what it would feel like. What women? She challenged. Internet women, I said sheepishly. Okay, I won't lie. I may have heard that before. And haven't you been curious about it? Not really. I'm satisfied with what I have. I've only ever wanted you. I've never needed anything else. I'm touched, honey, truly. I made sure to look her in the eyes. I love you, and I know you'd never want to cheat on me. Of course not. But I guess what I'm asking is haven't you ever wondered? Haven't you heard another woman talking about it? Or seen it in video? Or thought back to that basketball player and had a moment of curiosity? She paused. Fine, she said finally. I guess as a passing thought, but nothing serious. Thank you, I said. For what? She asked. For being honest with me. I asked you a sensitive question, and you were honest with me. I appreciate it. Okay, she said. You're welcome. But really, it's getting late, and those are all the stories I have. Can we go to sleep, babe? Of course, I said. I love you. I love you too. And as I felt her drift off to sleep, I imagined her in the dormitory with the basketball player. Instead of chasing him out, she approaches him timidly, reaching for his giant tool and then stroking it with gently with her hand. The fantasy continues until Samantha is straddling his tool, the obscene length of it unable to push fully into her womanhood, his shaft and balls protruding from beneath her beautiful, moonlit as asterisk. She rides him to a stunning climax, nearly screaming in unbridled pleasure, caressing myself in bed. I reach a climax of my own, coming intensely into a wad of tissues and tossing it in the trash before falling straight to sleep. Update 1. After that night, I backed off from requesting more stories. For one thing, I knew that Samantha didn't have more stories to tell. For another, I didn't want her to worry that I was obsessing about her fantasies and her past love life. But the idea hadn't left my mind for the first time. I had imagined my wife with another man, and something about it transfixed me. A few weeks after our night of storytelling, I came home from work to find Samantha leaning over the counter in the kitchen, reading a magazine. She was wearing tight yoga pants and a tank top, and her back was toward me as I approached. Hey, babe, she said without looking. How was your day? Good, I replied. I felt the perfect curvature of her as asterisk. You're in a fun mood, she said. Are you trying to distract me from my reading? Depends. Is it working? A little, she answered. But you're gonna have to be a bit bigger down there to entice me. I knew that my wife had meant to imply an erect. But her choice of the word bigger had triggered something within me. Oh, I said, keeping my tone playful and non-defensive. You wish your husband was bigger, huh? Ugh, you knew what I meant. James, she said sounding astonished yet pleased. You must have missed me today. Wow, she remarked. That was intense. I know, I said. What came over you? Not that I'm complaining. It had been a while since we had had love so spontaneously, and in the kitchen, no less. I don't know, I replied, although a part of me knew. Let's catch our breath and wash off. I think I have something to tell you. Okay, she replied and I felt her eyes follow me as I left the room. Twenty minutes later, we had finished showering and were in our bedroom, lying on our bed with our towels still wrapped around our bodies. Samantha traced her fingers through the hair on my chest, avoiding eye contact. So, what did you have to tell me? It's not a big deal, I said. 
Just something kind of lovey that's been on my mind a bit lately. Tell me. She looked up and eyed me carefully. I've been thinking about that night a few weeks ago when you told some stories about your past. Something about that night stuck with me. What was it? I'm not sure, I said. I've been trying to figure it out myself. Until that night, I had never even thought about you with another man. But somehow, just the notion is kind of I guess intriguing to me. Samantha furrowed her brow. What about it is intriguing? That's what I'm struggling to understand. Maybe it's just a new way of fantasizing about you. If we hadn't met in high school and fallen in love, I'm sure your college days would have gone a lot different. I'm sure every guy in school would have wanted to date you. Okay, she said. Things would have gone differently. So, I'm just thinking aloud, I said. I guess it's funny to think about all of the different situations you would have been in. The different experiences you would have had. The different guys you would have dated. You mean the different guys I would have slept with? Yeah, well, that too. James, Samantha said seriously. I don't regret falling in love with you while we were young. I don't have any wild dreams of being with a bunch of other guys. I'm completely happy being only with you. I know, I said. It's silly. And I don't think I have any true jealousies. Like, I'm not worried some hot stud with a bigger is going to come steal you away from me or anything. Samantha laughed. Still curious about the size thing, huh? I guess that's part of it, I confessed. But apart from being jealous, the idea of you being with another man makes me feel turned on for some reason. Samantha seemed shocked. Really? Wait, is that why you came so hard earlier? Were you thinking about something like that? Sort of, I said. I explained to her about her use of the word bigger, my fantasy that my tool was extra thick, and even thinking about Samantha with other men. It's confusing, I said. I don't understand why it turns me on, it just does. All right, Samantha said. Well, what does this mean? I'm not sure, I answered. Maybe it's something we can keep talking about to figure out? Maybe it's something to explore? Samantha considered this. Like you want me to be with someone else? No, I don't think so, I said quickly. Definitely not now, at least, I don't know. We paused for a moment, both unsure of what to say. Hey, Sam, I began timidly. Mind if I ask you something? Sure. After that night, you told me those stories from your past. Did you think about those things at all after? Not really. After a short pause, she said, Well, maybe there was one thing. I held my breath, awaiting her response. For context my job requires me to leave town approximately one weekend per month. Samantha and I have an agreement that we're allowed to watch video during our time apart. Samantha explained that when she last accessed, she thought about what she was seeing a little differently. She went on. Really? I was curious, but unsure what to ask. Yeah, she went on. I was drawn to the man's tool and thought about what his tool might feel like. Like if it was inside of me. She suddenly stopped and turned to me, a sheepish look on her face. I could tell she was concerned for my reaction, like perhaps her words had hurt me. That's kind of hot, actually, I said. I'm surprised you don't usually think of video that way. I don't, she said. She ventured to go on. In fact, it did make me think back to that basketball player I met in college. And for the first time, I guess I was a little bit curious. Not like I'd want to act on it, but just in a passive, fantasy sort of way. Like, just wondering about it. I get that. That's pretty much how I feel when I watch video, to be honest. I've only ever been with you, so video lets me explore fantasies of people I'd never be with. But I wouldn't even want that in real life. In real life I have you, and I don't need anyone else. Then we feel the same way, Samantha concluded. Kind of, I said. We both fantasize about other people, but neither of us has an urge to actually be with anyone else. Lying back on the bed, I looked up at the ceiling, unsure if I could say my next thoughts directly to Samantha's face. In a way it's different, though. If you thought of me with another woman, I assume the idea would be devastating and turn you off. But to me, 
The idea of you wanting another man, fantasizing about another man, and even being with another man would turn me on. I guess we are different that way. Does that bother you? Not at all. Does it bother you? I don't think so. But like I said, I'm not really sure what to do about it. Like, we discovered you have this turn on, but I don't know what we should do. Maybe we shouldn't do anything, I said. Maybe it's just a crazy idea, a phase that will pass. Soon enough, I'm sure the idea will start to freak me out. Maybe, Samantha said. I guess we'll find out. Update 2. A few more months passed. In some ways I was right. A majority of the time I didn't have any thoughts at all of Samantha being with another man. However, when I'd return from my work trips, I'd be curious about the video Samantha had been watching and how she'd experienced it. I'd ask her what she watched, what the actors looked like, and what she paid attention to. To my surprise, her interest continued to gravitate more toward the male talent than ever. She even confessed once that she had searched for the term huge tool. Just out of curiosity, she insisted. She said that those scenes were too intense. Apart from these short conversations, our relationship was as normal and thriving as ever. We continued to have love almost every day, and I hardly ever thought of her with other men. Meanwhile, we were having conversations about our careers and the idea of having children. I had recently gotten a promotion at work, and I used my increase in salary to save for a nice vacation south of the border in Cancun, Mexico. We booked our plane tickets and purchased a room at an all-inclusive, adults-only resort on the Mayan Riviera in the spring. As our tropical getaway approached, Samantha and I grew more and more excited to enjoy our trip together. I even took her shopping for new swimsuits, and I bought her some scandalous-looking items that I was sure would turn some heads at the beach. Things were going exactly as planned, until one night. Less than two weeks before our expected travel date, I got an email from work. You're kidding me, I groaned, reading my email from my phone one evening while we hung out on the couch. Our biggest client will be visiting from out of the country and is insisting on meeting with me. Right in the middle of our trip. What? Samantha exclaimed. Tell them no. I want to, I said. But I'm not sure I can. They're honestly our biggest account. And my work with them was a major reason for getting my promotion. They want me to personally tour them around our facilities, so I can't just video in. We rushed to the computer to try to revise our travel itinerary. We learned that our plane tickets were non-refundable, but were transferable we could change them to another date, or even to another name. But the resort, which we had gotten a pretty good price on, was already holding a large deposit over our heads that we couldn't get back. I sighed. You should go without me. You can take a friend. What? No, Samantha said. No way. I only want to go with you. Well, you're not going with me, I lamented. At least not this spring. Samantha hugged her knees to her chest and pouted. It was disappointing to say the least. I imagined all the fun we could have had together. Drinking cocktails on the beach, snorkeling in romantic coves, having love in new and exotic places. That's when an idea hit me. Samantha, I have a suggestion. I want you to go on this trip if you're able to find a friend to go with you. Samantha was about to protest, but I cut her off. Now hear me out. I'd like you to go on the trip, and I'd like you to go as if you were single. I beg your pardon, she asked. She looked dumbfounded and distressed. Think about it, I said. Those crazy fantasies I have, thinking of you having fun with other men, dating around, enjoying their attention. She caught on. You want me to actually live out your fantasies and flirt with other men? Yeah, I replied. Flirt with them, and maybe even more. If I give you permission, it isn't cheating. We'd come up with some parameters, some boundaries we'd agree on. And in return, I'd like you to tell me everything that happens on your trip. In detail. I don't know, Samantha said. The fantasies were one thing, but I can't see myself doing this in real life. What if it backfires? What if one of us ends up really hurt? I won't be hurt, I assured her, as long as you follow the rules. 
She gave me a skeptical look, but said nothing. I think it could be fun, I went on. I know it will be fun for me, I'll hear all about it. And about how lovey my wife is to all kinds of strange men. Your pleasure will be my pleasure, I insisted. I tried to sound playful, as I got up and moved toward Samantha, wrapping her shoulders in an embrace. She leaned in toward me. Give me some time to process this, she said. I'll think about it. That's all I ask. I kissed her on the cheek, and despite the sting of not joining her on our trip, deep inside I was more excited than ever. Final update. The next morning was a Saturday, and I'd slept in more than usual. It was nearly 10 a.m. when I rolled out of bed, and when I got to the kitchen, Samantha was making pancakes. Good morning, she greeted me, eyes still down in the pan. I talked to Jenny. She said she can go. My mind erupted in shock and excitement. Not only had Samantha agreed, but it had only taken one night to convince her, and she had already asked a friend. Could she be as excited about this idea as me? Great, I stammered. What did you tell her? Again, not looking up, she said. Oh, I told her about your meeting, how important your work function was, but also about how amazing the resort photos looked online. I sent her the link, and she's totally stoked. I see, I said. In some ways, Jenny was an ideal companion for this trip. Her family was from Puerto Rico, and not only did she speak Spanish, but she was a total flirt, which would help Samantha get in the groove. By the way, Samantha added, quickly glancing up at me and then away. I hope you don't mind, but I told her she'd only have to pay for half of the room, and we'd cover the plane ticket. Since the trip's short notice, is that okay? Yeah, perfect, I said. I hadn't even thought about whether we'd ask her to pay. Our finances had looked good lately, and I wasn't even worried. Did you tell her about about the stuff from last night? I couldn't quite say it aloud. About that, Samantha began. She looked at me fully now and her eyes looked serious, almost concerned. Are you sure that's what you want? I took a breath. My balls were screaming, yes. But in my mind, I had a whisper of doubt about how things might unfold. I decided to side with a screaming. With measured restraint, I answered, I still feel good about that. Yes, as long as you do. I admit it sounds fun. Scary, risky, even, but fun. And we'd have to figure out our rules before I agree. So that morning, as we ate our pancakes, we devised the following rules. Only do something if it feels entirely safe. Only do things you want to do. Don't do anything just to please James. Always let Jenny know where you are and who you're with. Always. Do not form attachments. Do not have an encounter with someone on multiple days. If you decide to have intercourse with another man, he must wear a rubber. You will send a daily email update to James. Apart from a general update on the trip, it will include a detailed account of any flirtatious or lovely encounters that may occur. Leave no details out. There should be no secrets. Write what you truly feel, good and bad, the emotions, positive or otherwise. Write the truth, not just what you think James wants to hear. And that was it. We read the list through a few times and agreed that it was a sound plan. Although she would email me daily, we agreed that she'd get no response from me, as I didn't want my input to influence her behavior. The exception, of course, would be in case of an emergency or if I got cold feet about our plan. In addition, I assured Samantha that if nothing ended up happening, or if she realized she didn't feel comfortable, she could abandon the idea and simply enjoy a fun, relaxing vacation with her friend. When their departure date finally arrived, I drove Samantha and Jenny to the airport and pulled over in the drop-off zone. We exited the vehicle, and I pulled their luggage out of my trunk. With tears in her eyes, Samantha kissed me goodbye and handed me her wedding band to hold on to. She wasn't going to wear it on the trip, and it was safer leaving it with me. The symbolism wasn't lost on us, as we held each other tightly for a final embrace. I love you, she whispered in my ear. I know. The Star Wars reference was our little joke and I think the familiarity gave her comfort as she gave me a final squeeze. I'm not sure if I can do this, she said. 
it's okay. Holding her by the shoulders, I looked in her eyes. In my best Yoda impression, I began, do or do not, then shifted to my own voice to say, I will love you just the same. A moment later, as I watched her and Jenny roll their luggage into the airport and out of sight, I found myself filled with hope but devoid of expectation. The end. Thanks for watching. Remember, revolving time exists because of your support. So take care of yourself and see you soon with another story.